verse 19 through 21, and it reads, O Israel, praise the Lord. O priests, descendants of Aaron, praise the Lord. O Levites, praise the Lord. All you who fear the Lord, praise the Lord. The Lord be praised from Zion, for he lives here in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. If there is never a day that is important to praise him, Today on Resurrection Sunday is a day to praise the Lord. Oh, 
For he has risen. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave. And for that we say, praise ye the Lord for having grace upon us, for delivering us from our sins. For we are unworthy, but we praise you with our whole hearts. We praise you with our whole mouths. We praise you with every, everything in our being. We praise you. Because you saw fit enough, Father, to send your son Jesus to die on the cross, to be buried in a grave, but to be risen with all power and majesty, for he conquered death and the grave for us. And for that we say, thank you, Jesus. There is nothing like your blood. There is nothing like your blood. There is nothing that your blood can't conquer. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Our hearts are, our hearts are thankful. Our hearts are grateful that you saw fit enough to allow us to come together in worship and spirit and in truth to tell everyone that we know that you reign. Father, we pray for the hearts and the minds of your people who are gathered here and who are on their way. We pray that we will be open and receptive to the word that you have for us, for it will deliver, it will heal, and it will set free. And for that, Father, we say thank you. We pray for the man of this house as he brings your word, that he will bring it exactly how you instructed him to do, that he will not waver, but he will be obedient and speak the word of the Lord. It is in your son Jesus' name that we honor and we adore you, and we thank you because you reign forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Yes. How many knows our God reigns? Yes, he does. Jesus reigns. Yes, he does. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. He defeated death. Yes. And he reigns right now. Yes. He yes, reigns. Yes, yes, yes. We ask that you help us sing this song. You reign, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God reign, my God reign. Our God reign, our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Above every name. Yes, my God reign, my God reign. Our God reign, our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. With power and majesty, in your authority, you reign. You reign. With power and majesty, in your authority, you reign. You reign. Yes, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Say it again, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Lord, you reign. Above every name, with power and with majesty, power and majesty and authority, and authority, you reign. You reign. Yeah. Say it again if you believe it, you reign. With, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Yes, my God reign. My God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Say it again, my 
God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. My God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name with power and majesty. You reign. You reign. With power and majesty. You reign. You reign. Come on, clap, yes, clap, 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 clap. my God reigns. My, my God reigns. My God reigns. My God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Say it again. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. With power and majesty.
Yes, 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 yes. Yes, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Without God, you wouldn't be here right now. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you're feeling, you wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Happy Easter, y'all. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. We're going to stay together today. Uh, this lesson will be appropriate for all ages. Amen. 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 Um, just a few announcements before we go into the word. Um, in two weeks, today is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, but two Sundays from now, we will celebrate our one-year anniversary. Amen? One-year anniversary. We, we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your participation. Um, God is doing amazing things, and he continues to bless us each and every week. Amen? We have to just remain obedient and faithful. That's it obedient and faithful, and God will do the rest. Amen? Amen. So on April 15th, 15th we'll celebrate our one-year anniversary, and then the following Sunday is Youth Sunday. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're so excited to have our youth participate. Last year, we enjoyed the pool downstairs right after worship. That was pretty cool to go to church and then go down to the pool. We had pizza and refreshments, so we're going to have a wonderful time again this year. Amen? Amen. And then if you're a high school senior, at the end of the month, we'll be announcing our scholarship opportunity for our high school graduates. It is our responsibility to help those who want to pursue other things. It doesn't matter if it's military or college. You graduate from high school, we want to encourage you to apply for our scholarship. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for resources. Amen resources, what it's all about. And I'm going to announce this every week for a year. Our global mission, we will be helping um, people in Cameroon build a well so they can get um, great water. Amen? Amen. So we're going to start that initiative. We're in conversation with people who live in Charlotte, who are from Cameroon. Uh, we're in conversation with them about the details and what the total amount of money they need and the resources they need to help the people, it doesn't matter for us. What matters is we're going to give. Amen? God will make sure the resources go into the right hands. Our job is to help raise money so they can build a well to help their people in Cameroon. Amen. 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 I think that's all of my announcements for now. Let, let's, let's stand up and greet one another. We feel a little tight, so let's stand up greet one another. Say hello, good morning to someone. Come on, stand up and greet one another with a holy hand, shake a hug. Amen. Amen. That's what the Lord would want us to do. Now we can prepare our hearts for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us go to God in prayer. Dear gracious and merciful Father, we come to you as humble as we know how to say thank you, Lord. 
we thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for leaning down from heaven and breathing to breathing into us this morning. Now, Lord, I ask for your guidance, your leadership, your voice, your heart, your mind. Decrease me so that your word increases. I ask that you use me. Bring back to my remembrance everything that you've shared with me privately so I can share with your people publicly. And I'll be so careful to give you all the praise and the glory. It is in your son, Jesus Christ, that we do pray. Let us all say amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to do something quite different this morning. We're going to be talking from four Gospels, the Gospels of the New Testament. Um, God has laid on my heart to craft and put together his story in such a way that we're going to be pulling from all four Gospels. Amen? Our lesson entitled is Lessons from an Empty Tomb. Amen? Lessons from an Empty Tomb. The scene described in the Bible as the resurrection is arguably one of the most significant scenes in the entire Bible. Lessons from an Empty Tomb. The Gospel of Mark chapter 16 records Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, mother of James, are walking towards the tomb to anoint Jesus, to anoint his body. When one of them asks, because they know that he was crucified and he was buried, one of them asks, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And then they happen to look up and they realize that the stone in front of the tomb had been rolled away. The Gospel of Matthew records it slightly different. As the two Marys journeyed towards the tomb, an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, rolled back the tomb, rolled back the stone at the tomb, and the two guards, because of their glory, go into complete shock. And when they arrive, Mary uh, the both Marys arrive, the angel informs Mary, Jesus has risen, as he said. The angel invites Mary inside to see the place where Jesus laid. The Gospel of Luke in chapter 24 records, just like Matthew's account, Luke states that the two Marys journeyed to the tomb and the angel of the Lord rolled back the stone in front of the tomb. But when they arrived, the angel asked them, why do you seek the living among the dead? The angel goes on to say, he is not here. He has risen. Then the Gospel of John in chapter 20 records, Mary arrived at the tomb and saw the stone taken away. She then ran to tell Peter, but listen to her report. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter and the other disciple, they run and they race towards the tomb, and they arrive at the tomb only to see the image of Jesus' tunic and his head wrapped lying there inside the tomb. We have four accounts of the Gospels of Jesus Christ, but there's just one reality. Jesus lived, Jesus was crucified, Jesus was buried, and Jesus was resurrected. How do we know? How do we know at this point in time in the story that Jesus has risen? At this point in time in the story, Both Marys only have seen an empty tomb. Peter and the other disciple that Jesus loved have only seen an empty tomb. All they've seen is Jesus' linen and his head wrapped lying inside of the tomb. The only evidence we have at this particular moment is an empty tomb. But I love it. I love it. Because the only evidence we need is an empty tomb. Y'all missed it. 
Isn't it amazing when God's faithfulness exposes your faithlessness? Isn't it amazing when God's faithfulness exposes our faithlessness? In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, if you go back and read it, Mary is weeping at the tomb. And Jesus appears and says, why are you weeping? I've done exactly what I told you I would do. That I would die, the Son of God had to be crucified. But three days later, I would rise. Remember in the Gospel of Matthew, early in chapter 8, the disciples are on the boat with Jesus. And they wake up Jesus because he's sleeping. They says, Jesus, we're drowning. Jesus wakes up and says, why are you afraid, O ye of little faith? God's, this is lesson number one, God's faithfulness will expose your faithlessness. An empty tomb. An empty tomb. What does an empty tomb mean to us? One, it affirms prophecy of the Old Testament. It affirms that God can raise the dead. The empty tomb affirms Jesus' acceptance as a living sacrifice. An empty tomb validates Jesus as Savior. But most importantly, an empty tomb speaks to the omnipotence, omnipotence of God. What is omnipotence of God? The omnipotence of God is the power of God. Why do I say the power of God? Come on, speak back to me. God didn't have to remove the stone for Jesus to rise. God didn't have to remove the stone for Jesus to rise. Removing the stone was not for Jesus' sake. It was not an exit for Jesus. It wasn't an exit plan for Jesus, but it was an entrance for us. Y'all missing this? God wanted others not just to see, but also to know. Because he opened the tomb and allowed people to see in. But he also wanted them to know. That's why they ran and told it. Even the two guards that stood there had to go back and report, Jesus is missing. But see, it's not death, but it's life. It's not an end, but it's a beginning. Like Mary, there are some stones that stand between you and God. See, that's bondage. Your spiritual breakthrough may be on the other side of your stone. But you've been trying to move this stone for years. You've been trying to push this stone on your own. You've been trying to force this relationship on your own. You've been trying to force this marriage on your own. You've been trying to deal with the people on your job for many years. You've been dealing with drugs and alcohol abuse and, and drug abuse for years. You've been trying to move this stone. Remember, Mary said, who's going to help us remove the large stone? What's the message? You've even asked others for help. There are some stones in your life only God can move. There are some stones in your life, no matter what you do, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what addiction you have, no, what, no matter what relationship you're in, no matter how much you try, there are some stones in your life that only God can move. But see, it gets better. See, I love it when, and y'all not as happy as I was when I was studying this, I love it when God makes it impossible for man to get the credit. <laughs> There's some stuff in your life you can't figure out. God says, won't well, nobody figure it out because I'm going to get the glory. I love it when God makes it impossible for man to get the credit. I love it when God sets himself up to be God all by himself. See, there's some stuff you'll never solve without prayer, without the word of God, without Jesus in your life. See, if the man, if man moves the stone, man gets the credit. But see, if God moves the stone, God gets the glory. 
While the women were headed towards the tomb, wondering who's going to move the large stone for us to anoint Jesus' dead body. See, if man does it, then man, it could be reported that they stole Jesus. They took Jesus away. Jesus is missing. Y'all get this? But God says, no, 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 this is my son that I sent. I will remove the stone in your life. Why? So that I can get the glory. There are times when God has to show his omnipotent power to strengthen your faith. There are times when God will show up in your life to let you know that I have all power. A songwriter put it this way, allow me to believe what you see. What do I mean? You may see unemployment, but God is working on your application. And he moved it to the top of the pile, and now it's your turn for the interview. See, you may see bare cupboards, but it's not bare cupboards because there's a check being mailed to your house that you're going to open up and it's going to be a check inside to buy you some groceries. You may see homelessness, but somebody right now is preparing to move and they're not going to sell their house. They may give you their house. See, Mary saw an empty tomb, but God saw prophecy fulfilled because God's word was on the line. What am I saying? When, when you're walking in the flesh, you think in the flesh. So you'll see the empty tomb and tell everybody that Jesus is missing. That's exactly what Mary did. See, your view of God is minuscule. It's very small. But when you're walking in the spirit and you think in the spirit, you'll say to yourself, the tomb is empty because he has risen. Your view of God then is infinite. See, an empty tomb, and this is deep, it speaks to the omnipresence of God. See, see, lesson number three, God is not limited by time, space, and matter. See, it's no longer in the empty tomb, the scene of the empty tomb, it's no longer a question about Jesus coming and going. See, Jesus walked everywhere. Jesus Walk to places and heal people. Jesus was sent to places. Jesus was called to places. Y'all missing it? It's no longer about him coming and going. It's about him appearing and disappearing now. See, an empty tomb now says, because God removed the stone, now Jesus has the ability that he's always had, but he's going to show us now that I can be anywhere. That's the omnipresence of God. See, see, Jesus appears to Mary. What happens after Jesus comes out of a tomb? He also appeared to the two disciples who were on the road to uh, Emmaus. And, and so when Jesus appears to the disciples, y'all remember the story? This is the omnipresence of God. God can be everywhere. Jesus is, uh, there's an empty tomb. Jesus is removed. Jesus has risen. And he goes and stops by the disciples who are uh, a little uh, uh, skeptical in their faith. They're in the meeting room. Y'all remember the story after he had risen? What did Jesus do? Jesus appeared in the room, but the Bible says the door never opened. The empty tomb uh, speaks to us of the omnipresence of God. So now God can be everywhere. Y'all still don't get it? Let me help you. I'm sitting here today, but my daughter's in East Carolina, in Greenville, North Carolina. So I can ask for protection today and receive it and also pray that God protects her in Greenville. Y'all still don't get it? You can ask for things in your household and say, God also bless my mama who in Florida. You can be asking for things at your job and at the same time say, God also protect my kids in school. Because of the empty tomb, God is an omnipresent God now. So Jesus' work on earth is anywhere and everywhere. Never before until this moment does Jesus just appear. But it gets deeper. Because God is smarter than all of us. He's smarter than Mary and Peter. He's smarter than those who crucified Jesus. He's the all-knowing God. 
So God says, I'm going to hit him in the head because I got some things that was promised in the Old Testament that have to be fulfilled. The empty tomb also speaks about the omni, omniscience, omniscience, omniscience of God, which simply means the knowing, all-knowing of God. First, there was the power of God, the omnipotence of God. And then there's the omnipresence of God, that God now can be everywhere. But now there's the omniscience, I'm going to get that word together, of God, which simply means God it all is all-knowing. When Mary looked in the tomb, what did Mary see? They saw Jesus' clothes lying there, the linen and the head scarf. When Peter and the other disciple arrived in the tomb, what did they see? They seen Jesus' tunic and his head wrapped the same thing. It was the outfit that Jesus was buried in. But to fully understand these buried clothes left in the empty tomb, you have to go back to Lazarus in the Gospel of John, chapter 11. Jesus, after allowing Lazarus to be dead four days, he arrives on the scene. And Jesus, you know the story, he tells Lazarus to come out. Lazarus comes out, but Lazarus is wearing something that doesn't go with his new life. See, if you choose Jesus, there's a new life. And there's some things of old that don't go with the new life. So Jesus tells the people to unwrap him, unbind him. In other words, take off those burial clothes. Lazarus is raised from the dead. He's not resurrected because death still comes to Lazarus. Only Jesus is resurrected. Jesus says, whoever believes in me, although he died, shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. Take those burial clothes off of him. Those clothes speak of death. Jesus says, I come that you may have life. So Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And you may be wondering, what does this have to do with today's lesson? Lesson number four, a risen Savior can't walk around in burial clothes. So the tomb had to be empty with burial and sinful clothes in it. He died on the cross for your sins. He became sin. So he can't walk around in his newness. So he had to leave burial clothes in the tomb. Y'all getting this? Let's go a little bit deeper. In the Old Testament, on the Day of Atonement, this was the day that the high priest went into the tabernacle to atone for the sins of the people. One day of the year, they would go dwell with God, spend time with God, present the sacrifice to God, and ask for the forgiveness of sins of the people. But while they were there, they only wore, they wore many garments, but on the Day of Atonement, they only wore white garments. And when they were done spending time with God, and they would be there all day, it was the Day of Atonement, not the two minutes that you ask for forgiveness in your prayer. They spent the whole time there, but when they were done, at the conclusion of the Day of Atonement, they took off those clothes and they left them at the burial site of sin. So when they walk into cleanness, when they transported themselves to their new place, they never wore clothes that they entered in to present sin. Y'all got to get this. Before transporting to a clean place, the high priest would leave their clothes uh, that symbolizes death and sin at the site. See, death is a process. Death is a process. So sometimes you have to leave your burial clothes in certain places and promise yourself to never return to them. Then you have to walk in newness because resurrection is life. Resurrection, lesson number five, resurrection never dies. It only lives. Our problem today is that we've accepted Jesus Christ in our life as our personal Savior, and we walk in the newness of Christ. We walk with life, but what we do, we try to go back and pick up these old dead clothes. See, the clothes you wear to the club and the clothes you wear to church shouldn't match. The spirit you had when you went out shouldn't be the spirit you had when you, went to, when you go to church. There's some stuff that needs to be left in the tomb. There's some things that need to stay there. Why? For others to see. 
See, it wasn't about impressing Jesus. It wasn't about impressing God. He removed the stone so others can see death has been defeated. And I leave death in an empty tomb because the tomb was made for death. There's some things in your life, when you take them off, you have to leave them there and never go back and pick them up. Because resurrection never dies. Resurrection never dies. What does that mean to beloved? When God said, plant this church, he gave me the chapter, the, the book in the chapter of Colossians 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, if then you have been resurrected with Christ, seek the things that are above where, where Christ is seated and not at, at the right hand of God and set your mind on things that are above, not things on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The entire resurrection is found in this scripture. If, you can claim it, you can say it, but if, then you have been raised, resurrected with Christ. Seek the things that are above. Don't go back into the tomb. Leave them closed there. Leave those issues there. Leave those matters there. Leave those problems there. Leave those ailments there. Leave that illness there. Leave that disease there. Leave it there. You don't have to go back. Jesus died once. He never will die again. That's the difference between Lazarus and Jesus. Lazarus was raised from the dead, but it was inevitable he was going to die at some point again. Jesus is resurrected because resurrection never dies. A resurrected life never dies. You have to leave it in the tomb. I want to give someone an opportunity today to leave it in the empty tomb. Leave the linen in the head scarf. The things that cover your body and the things that wrap around your mind. Y'all missing this. The things Holy Spirit, we welcome that protect you your temple but not good for you, leave it. The things that you allow to come into your mind, take it off and leave it. It's so important that this day moving forward, that you understand what resurrection is truly about. We can talk about all facets of Resurrection Sunday, but without an empty tomb, it's irrelevant. See, Jesus dies on the cross. But without resurrection, it's just death. See, that's what separates us from other practices of religion. That our God, our Jesus, our Holy Spirit is a risen spirit. And he is the only one that has defeated death. That's what separates you high school students from others. That you're believers of a risen Savior. And without the tomb, without the death burial, and now the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible says now he sits at the right hand of the Father. If he stays in the tomb, if they find his body, this day, a lot of people will be traveling to stand outside of the tomb, praying because their thought would be, Jesus is inside the tomb. That's not faith. That's a belief that Jesus is on the other side of the stone. So God said, because I know my people, I'm going to remove the stone so you can see for yourself. And when the guards want to report it, Jesus is missing. They tried to make up a lie. They said, say that the disciples stole his body. God is brilliant. God is amazing. And the same God that rose his only begotten son from the dead 
can change your life in seconds. You just got to trust him. You just got to believe in him. The same power that Jesus rose from the dead with, we have that same power. We have, because of the Holy Spirit, we can send angels to California if we want it. Because our God is omnipresent. He's not in barriers and bondage by walls. He's not defined about limitations. God is unlimited. Space, matter, and time doesn't matter to God. That's why you sleep at night in peace. Because he's watching over you. And no matter what part of Charlotte you stay, he's everywhere. But God is brilliant. He has an all-knowing mind. He knows everything that you think about. There are things in your life that you're going through that you may be questioning. You may be wondering, how am I going to work this out? God knows. Because there's markers on your timeline that God makes a post. And he said, I need to show up right here because you're at a breaking point. And so he makes a little post on your timeline and you get it on your phone. He said, Jesus loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. And while you're thinking about going to pick up these clothes, God said, I'm going to make another post. This time I'm going to use a messenger. I'm going to use somebody in your family. I'm going to use your child to speak life into you. See, we dismiss kids. Children can speak life into you. God can use anything and anybody. God can have a bird hit your windshield and you pull over to see about it. And you complaining about the bird in the windshield and there was an accident ahead of you. So God said, I'm going to delay you for five to ten minutes because I don't want you to run into what's about to happen. He knows. We just have to trust him. I pray and hope that this message of resurrection has spoke to your soul, your spirit, and your being. That's why the empty tomb is so important. There are lessons in the empty tomb. So if you're here today and you want to give your life to Christ, this is the time. We do it both formally and informally. You can come up now and say, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to walk this new walk. I want to uh, uh, live this life as a resurrected Christ-like being. This is the moment to do so. And if we're all believers but you haven't been baptized, I want to give you that invitation as well. That you can come now and say, you know what? I want my own resurrection. I want a renewal. I want to bury all of that, that death, that sin. And I want to go down in the water to be cleansed. And when I come back up, I can now speak life like never before. You accept Jesus Christ in your life as your personal Savior. That's the first step. That baptism is also another seal. To say, I am making a public demonstration that I am a believer of Jesus Christ through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to be baptized, you can come right now. Maybe you want to join Beloved. Maybe you say, this is my church home. This is the place I want to be. I enjoy the spirit of this church. I enjoy the love of this church. I enjoy the word of God here. I enjoy the people here. There is a presence about God here. This is the time to come forward and say, want to be part of this church. And here's what I would say as the person that has been assigned to this church. We only want one thing from you. We're actually two because it's two words. We want your gifts and talents. That's all. Because everybody that God sends to beloved, he sends gifts and talents. I don't talk about money just to help everybody. Here's why. God will convict your heart to give through your commitment of your gifts and talents being consecrated to the church. Because you'll see the growth need of the church. 
and he will speak to you to say, I need to help this church. My job is to help you shape and nurture and foster your gifts and talents. That's it. So if you want to use your talents here, beloved, this is the time to come talk to me now or talk to us after. There are plenty of people in here that you can talk to about what beloved represents. And let me just help. Hey, Our mission, we thank have you once again for tuning in. Our Pastor Leon signing off. Now it's your turn to do the work. Uh, what does that mean? That means you have to take the next step so God can take the next 20, 40, 50, 60 steps in your life uh, on the new me journey. Um, thank you for uh, being with us and hearing from God and God's word. He blessed us and we trust and believe and we hope and we pray that He was the word was a blessing to you. If you want more information about Beloved Community Church, we ask that you visit our website at BelovedCC. Dot org. That's beloved, the letter C, C for community church dot org. You can also email us at beloved uh, C O L three at gmail dot com. That's beloved Colossians three at gmail dot com. So there's plenty of ways to um, uh, contact us our Facebook, whether it's Twitter, Twitter or Instagram. We got all the social media that you need. But most importantly, we have the word of God. And so if God can reach us, then he's given us the power and the resources to reach you. I just want to encourage everybody today. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you can do so. All right. I don't want you to wait to be in a church edifice to do so. You can do that right now by saying, God, forgive me of my sins. God, I believe that you sent your only begotten son to live, to die, to be buried and now resurrected uh, uh, with you, O oh Lord. And now I have complete and direct access to you, O oh Lord. And that is the, the, the formula for salvation. And so you don't have to be in a church home. You can say that to yourself right now and God will forgive you. He doesn't hold grudges. He'll race and clean that slate but here's the important part that you have to do now you have to get um, in an educated environment where you can learn more about God and so that you can receive instruction and use your gifts and talents to help build the kingdom here on earth. We have a lot of ministry opportunities. We're launching new things in 2018. Our marriage ministry is going to go stronger and harder this year. We're launching a women's ministry. We want, we're launching a men's ministry. We're, we're going to launch a family ministry because we want you to understand the totality of what God has put together that no man can undo. So we just trust and believe that you'll find us at 6824 Democracy Drive, beloved community church. We love you. God bless. And remember, don't forget the new me journey. Amen.